Hey everyone, it's Amanda and today I'm going to do another weekly wrap up. I have six books to talk about. First book that I am going to talk about is Shadow Creek by Joy Fielding. This is about a kind of ragtag group of people that under strange circumstances end up going to the Adirondack Mountains to stay and camp and at the same time there are two serial killers that are out killing people for no real reason. So you can kind of imagine what happens there. This book was a bit unrealistic. There were some scenes that just did not make very much sense, but I still enjoyed it. I really liked her writing style. It's very clean, simple, easy. And the prologue really sucked me in from the beginning. The prologue is very disturbing, but it's also just makes you want to continue reading. So overall I was happy with it and I gave it four stars. I have two books that I own by Joy Fielding that I will be picking up soon because I did like this one so much. I also read The Shore by Sarah Taylor. I received this from Blogging for Books. I was a little wary before I requested this because it's a short story collection, but I had read that they are all connected so I thought maybe I wouldn't mind it. I personally don't love short story collections. I feel like when it's a short story, I don't have time to get to know the characters, the plot. It just feels incomplete to me. So I wasn't sure, but it does take place on three islands off the coast of Virginia. You have Accomac Island, Chincoteague Island, and Assateague Island. I went on vacation to Chincoteague Island when I was about 10 years old and we go to Assateague quite a lot because it's really close to Ocean City, Maryland and we go there for the beach. Usually when we go to Ocean City we make a trip there because it's really nice. So that's another reason I wanted to read it but it really doesn't talk a lot about the island. It's more about the people that live there. This is just a really sad book. There were really no happy stories. It's very depressing. It does start pretty interesting. The very first story really does start off with a bang and you are intrigued to continue, but the time frames jump back and forth all over the place. So it's confusing. There are a lot of characters. One thing that is helpful is that there is a family tree in the book, which I was constantly referring to because you, you get to meet most of these people in the family tree. Overall, it was a decent book, but I I found myself making myself read it at times just because I wasn't a huge fan because it was very depressing. So I think I gave this two and a half stars, maybe three stars, I can't really remember, but I think a lot of people would like it if you like short stories, but for me it just wasn't my favorite. I also read this one summer by Jillian Tamaki and Mariko Tamaki. I was really looking forward to getting this. I saw my library had it, so I snatched it up. First of all, the artwork in this book is amazing. I love it. I think it's my favorite part of the book. It's just so nice. The story is about two girls. I think, I don't know that their ages are ever stated, but it's Rose and Wendy. I think Rose is about maybe 13, and Wendy is a little bit younger. They come to this summer town every year and they're friends. When they when they come to the town they get together and and have fun together. And it's about the things they encounter through the summer. And there's a lot of drama going on. I was a little bit disappointed. I, I haven't read a lot of graphic novels so I wasn't very familiar with what the content would be. But based on this cover I would think it would be a great book for maybe the middle school crowd just because it looks like a middle school kind of cover but it has some very adult content. A lot of things were alluded to that just would have been more for the older teen crowd and I, I don't know I just was surprised by that because I thought it was going to be for a younger audience. I did enjoy the story. I thought it was interesting. Um, nothing super special about it though. My favorite part was the artwork and I gave this I think three stars. I also read Dismantled by Jennifer McMahon. I really don't want to go into the plot too much with this book because it's a very complex plot. It would take a while to 
go over, but it's a group of friends, one of them dies, and it kind of goes from there. I really liked the first, I'd say, one third of the book. I was really drawn in, I felt like it was very interesting, but it's a long book, and it started to really drag. And by the end, there were a lot of twists, a lot of things I didn't see coming, but the way everything was resolved really made me feel like I was reading a Fear Street book, which is kind of strange, but I did, because I can't really say a lot because I don't want to spoil anything, but you think it's one thing is happening and then you find out it's completely almost benign, and that was very much an R.L. Stein trick. So I was a little bit disappointed when it was all over. I really loved Island of Lost Girls by her that I just read. So I was expecting to love this, and I did really love the beginning, but it really slowed down in the middle, and then the ending was nearly ridiculous. So overall, I think I gave this three stars. I think it's worth reading, but definitely not my favorite. And then, because I was reading so many library books, I felt like my owned books were being neglected, and I really wanted to read just one of my own books. So I picked up Vacation by Matthew Costello. I have wanted to read this since I bought it, the cover just completely seems so interesting and it's very underrated. This book doesn't have many reviews at all on Goodreads and I had never heard anyone talking about it, so I was very curious. I love reading books that nobody else has read. So this is a really interesting story. It's a world where there has been a really big famine and drought and like a blight of the crops. And so the main character's name is Jack. He's a police officer for the NYPD. And there are these people that have turned into what they call can heads. They're like cannibals. They go around and they attack people and they eat them and they're crazy and you really, they're hard to kill. Sounds like zombies, but they're not technically zombies. So Jack, when the story opens up, is a police officer and he has a run-in with the can heads and he gets injured. So his boss, Set, decides to send him and his family on vacation. He says that he needs a break. There's this place called the Paterville Family Camp or something. It's in the Adirondack Mountains, so my second Adirondack book. And it's supposed to be really safe and secure because all the towns are surrounded by like electric fences. Even some of the highways are surrounded by electric fences. And this little place is supposed to be really secure, but it's like the old days. Your kids can go boating and swimming and you're staying in cabins and you don't have to worry. So he decides to take his family and they go, but when they get there, some things go down. And I really liked this book. I was very surprised by it. I went into it with very little expectations because I hadn't heard anything about it and it was great. I thought that at first when I was reading it, I thought it was gonna be a kind of generic story because you've heard this story before with like the people, like the, the zombie population kind of thing. But with the family camp, that made it different. It gave it a little twist and one thing I liked is that there were a lot of things that were alluded to, gory details, but it never went over the line of gore. I don't tend to like books that are extremely graphic and detailed, just I don't like reading that, but this you got to know, you were able to imagine what was happening, but it wasn't all described for you. So I liked that as well. This book is the first in a duology. The second one is Home. I also own that and I want to pick it up soon because this ended really interestingly. Like I want to know what's going to happen next. So overall I really enjoyed it. Gave it four stars and I would absolutely recommend it. And the last book that I read this week, I just finished today, is The Rumor by Ellen Hildebrand. I had a little trouble with this one. It was one of those books that when I was reading it, I was really enjoying it. But after I put it down, I didn't really want to pick it back up. I had to kind of force myself to pick up the book, which I find that a lot with contemporaries and myself. I personally like the thrillers and the psychological kind of books. So when it's a contemporary, I do enjoy them while I'm reading them, but I have to kind of make myself read them. I did really enjoy this book though. It's about all these rumors that are happening on Nantucket and some different characters. And it was it was good. At first I wasn't thinking I was going to like it at all because there was adultery in the book and I just hate adultery 
in any realm, so I wasn't a fan of that, but everything kind of worked out in a way that I wasn't too upset. And I thought it was just a fun, it's a fun story, nothing real deep. Some kind of interesting story arcs in this book that I didn't expect. And overall I thought it was, it was fun. I gave it three and a half stars and I would recommend it if you like Ellen Hildebrand's books. And that's it. Those are the books that I read this week. So I'll try to be back next week with more books that I read. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.